Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we got the new event today, but we also got a ton of actual usable prime times. Now the NHL is back, you're starting to see a lot. You're going to see a lot of actual, you know, relevant prime times. It's not just them picking and choosing for the day, which was really no method or madness. The one thing I want to talk about in terms of prime times, and everyone's going to ask, "Hey, someone had three points, or someone had two goals. Well, why aren't they getting a prime time this year, guys? There is there is no monthly cap. So in prior games, if you know someone got a team of the week or a prime time, they would go plus two from their prior card um and then that would be it if, if they got if they did another thing that valued a prime time it wouldn't release a, a plus two version of it again it would stay at the same of that previous upgrade um because they could only get one upgrade per month now there's no cap on it anymore but the thing is they don't want to make it where it's like okay, they have to release this card because said player did something certain, I, which I kind of like. It allows them a lot more creative flexibility and freedom. I'm, I'm kind of a fan of that because, again, I, I hate just the cookie-cutter stuff that you don't know. So um, not every night the automatic player is going to get. You're going to see some guys that get a uh, prime time, um, you know, for scoring an overtime winner, that kind of stuff. So, uh, but if they, you know, if Connor McDavid goes off for four points again, like he did every single night, they're not just going to release like one card every single day because they have to make sure that they don't have all these cards just completely run out of control. So, all right, guys, let's get into today's prime times as there is quite a few good ones. All right, we'll start off with the 85. Tomas Hurdle, who had a great game last night for my Sharks. Two goals on route to a... 4-3 shootout win, so six foot two, two twenty. He's always got great size and a good shot. With wingman, it makes him usable for free to play guys. 85 speed. If you get distributor, it's up to 88 and wingman activated. Uh, outside of that though, I mean, he's got a good shot for early on in the game, and he's left-handed, which is a added bonus because there isn't a lot of great left-handed winger cards. So keep that in mind. Nothing crazy, but you should be able to get him really cheap. Then we've got the 87 Kyle Connor, six foot one with magician. Uh, this one would be an avoid in my part. Like his shot is great, but there's a better Kyle Connor card, I believe, um, that you could go out and get. Uh, 85 speed with no speed synergy, just not really gonna you know do it at this point uh, again because like, he's not his acceleration is also 85. So I'd rather have Tomas Hurdle um, than Kyle Connor, the 85 version. Also, from my Sharks, thank God he had a great night. I know all this stuff going on, the memes and whatnot now, uh, but as a hockey player, Vander Kane is a fantastic one, and I am super happy for the man uh, to have a great opening night as he had three points uh, and just a fantastic showing. Now, Gladiator is a tough synergy for him. He's already extremely good in body checking, and he's six foot two. He kind of needs... It'd be nice if he had uh, Howitzer or something like that, uh, but... 87 speed and acceleration can get up to nine synergies. <clears throat> Excuse me. His shots right around 90. Hand stats all around 89. Defensively, he's really fun, like really good to use. This is a very defensive card, uh, but not enough speed or with enough speed to not kill you in that sense. So you should be able to get him pretty cheap, but nothing crazy here. But I'm still just glad as a Sharks fan that he had a good game. Then we've got the 88 Anders Lee, six foot three with Howitzer as the Islanders last night pumped the Rangers. So 86 speed with Howitzer with distributor up to 89. His acceleration is tough though, but he does have a nice shot at 94 basically for the shot power and 90 for the accuracy. Definitely usable. Six foot three. He's elite in his own zone. Um, especially with 89 body checking, 89 stick checking. Um, however, this is going to depend if you have a distributor. If you have distributor, then I think this is a usable winger card. And again, these are the kind of cards you want to go for, guys, um, that aren't going to be super popular on the market, and they're not like master items or anything like that, the the kind of meta cards um, where you can look to, to make some deals and, and get some steals on the market while, if you're you know a free-to-play team. So definitely a good card to look out for if you have distributor. Then we've got the 89 John Carlson with Workhorse. So obviously there's already an 89 John Carlson uh, with the best energy combo in the game. This one makes him sort of usable. Like if you don't have that one, this should be far cheaper, obviously. But 88 speed with Distributor. And if you have Workhorse, I think if you have Workhorse activated, this is a usable card. Because the slap shot is at 92 power, 86 accuracy, which is nice. His hand stats are all really good. And defensive stats are almost perfect as well. Stick checking and defensive awareness at 94, 93. There's just a lot of good right-handed defensemen. Like, would you rather have this card or Drew Doughty? But again, obviously the cost is going to dictate that. But um, still a very, very good right-handed defenseman card. I still think that if you packed it, you you could sell it. All right, then a big one is Connor McDavid just teed off last night. That end-to-end -end rush he had, that, like, I don't understand how someone is so fast. Like, it looks like boys to men. It's insane. 
Anyways, with Light the Lamp, obviously not a very good synergy. However, you have the, the Gretzky that has two to Light the Lamp. That helps out a little bit, so you don't have to kind of just, you know, it's almost activated. But obviously, it, this card alone is fantastic. 95 speed and acceleration with 98 agility. If you have a multiple team-based synergies, you have a 99 overall skating card, and you wouldn't need another Connor McDavid for the rest of the game. Um, the only the only downfall here is the synergy. So like the ninety with uh, the ninety winter national one, obviously a lot more valuable with distributor. But his shot is nice at ninety six accuracy, ninety one power. He's okay defensively in terms of eighty five body checking, but ninety one stick checking and ninety four defense awareness. This is just an elite card. No other way to say it. He's going to cost you a lot. However, these cards will go down in value quickly because there will be a lot of them. He will probably receive a few prime times. You know, every couple weeks. Um, again, like I said, they're gonna they're gonna make sure that it doesn't run rampant out of control because Connor McDavid can have four points every night. But that being said, you're okay with the other ones, like the 90 McDavid and the 89 Connor McDavid as well. But we're pushing like almost max skating stats with team based synergy, so an elite card. And then we've got the 93 Leon Dreisaitl. So the next prime time or team of the week guys should upgrade our team of the year Leon Dreisaitl. Now passing playmaker is a tough synergy. If this card had any sort of speed stat, he'd be fantastic. But even the team of the year version, it still feels like a little bit like here's the team of the year version that I, I love this card. Um, but it just, it still feels kind of sluggish. Uh, his skating stats are just far more improved. Um, or Sorry, they're exactly the same. My apologies. They're exactly the same on either card, but his synergies separate him a ton because he still feels kind of sluggish with all of your synergies activated. So this is a fantastic card. It's just don't overpay for it. Like, don't. The next one that comes out is going to be one that will upgrade the team of the year option, though. So keep that in mind. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for today's content. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And make sure you check out the Twitch channel live at 12 p.m. Eastern time every single day. You guys have a good one.